Okay, I think we're going to get started. Um, let people kind of trickle in. We got a lot to cover. So I'm just going to say welcome, everybody. My name is Joe Steven. I'm an intern at RSC. And today we have a great presentation from Nick and Ken from IDN about their new CAFM system that they have. Um, if you have a question, please ask it in the questions um, box that you have. I will say, since we have a lot to cover, we will not answer the question until the end of the presentation. We do have some time allotted to, to ask, but please go ahead and ask it. Just know we won't answer it right, right away. We'll answer it at the end of the presentation. As I said, we got a lot to get through, so I'm going to hand this over to Nick Springgate of IDN right now and let him take it away. Nick? Thank you very much, Joe, and thank you for everybody for tuning in today. We've got a terrific mixed audience of corporate, educational, and FM industry folks on the call. First off, I've got to thank the RSC team and Bob for promoting and hosting this introductory seminar on how to start managing your facilities in minutes, not months. We're very excited to showcase the CAFM SaaS solution that's been in development for over 14 years. Actually, it's been in development since the 1990s, when some of you may know that I was a proud Archibus business partner and co-developer of the Microview HVAC and electrical modules. In 2001, Microview was purchased by Bob at RSC, and he, along with Jeff Dreyer, continue to provide add-on value to the Archibus platform and community. Infrastructure.net, we refer to it as IDN, was established to address advanced FM needs for select clients with a focus on web-based connectivity and custom reporting, many with legacy Archibus installations. Over the years, we developed a full-stack CAFM program that is compatible, affordable, friendly, and mobile. Today, we are offering this modern solution to the broader, lower tier market, one that has been traditionally somewhat underserved. Bob wanted a product to fill this gap, and we thank him for making today's product launch possible. As we have a number of uh, Archibus business partners and other software firms with us on the call, we're delighted with your curiosity, and we'll have an upcoming webinar session devoted to your questions along with a deeper dive into the overall solution set business strategies and opportunities today's ad agenda is going to talk about how are you managing now our insights for space and work common considerations let's get you started and show you how easy it is which will be the demo portion for today then the key takeaways and then getting started with the q a so how are you managing today? An awful lot of clients that we meet are still managing with spreadsheets, PDF drawings, and email. Everything gets fragmented in different silos, very hard to pull everything together. Or are you wanting to replace an unsupported legacy system? And we've certainly seen many of those over the years. Or are you looking for a more affordable solution than you already have? Because cost is such a big factor these days. Or are your users frustrated with the complexity and the overwhelming features of an IWMS software? So with 30 years experience brings some insight. And we know that managers want to navigate their property portfolio visually and report graphically on spaces, people, organizations, and equipment, where end users want a crisp, intuitive, easy to learn role-based solution. So as an example, dashboards for a manager would include the main activities that they're looking after, whereas a casual user will have a dashboard that is like you see on the right, on a handheld device, the ability to put in a request and request uh, moves, services, and be able to find people on floor plans. You'll see that the CAFM, what is Computer Aided Facilities Management, is a floor plan tied to databases so that you can have uh, people and occupancy, utilization of space, and we'll be covering that in the demo today. Size, needs, and costs do matter. Most of the IWS solutions out there are 
similar to an SAP, whereas we're trying to approach it more as a QuickBooks, easy to use, fast and affordable. Same idea as do you need a pickup truck or do you need an 18 wheeler? So the common considerations, do you already have polyline drawings for your facility? Do you have CAD resources in house? Do you have facilities data in spreadsheets that could be imported? Can you proceed? Do you have a budget? And do you have systems like HR that need to be integrated? These are part of the project plan that go into any adoption of new technology. So how exactly do we get managing in minutes, not months? On our website are a variety of lessons that show that in seven minutes, you can add building and floor details. You can link drawings in six minutes, upload company data in six minutes, and you can get data out very quickly, and you can start producing service requests. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand it over to uh, our services director, Ken Janes, to introduce himself and to show you the demo that we prepared for today. Thanks, Nick. Uh, my name is Ken Janes. I've been in the uh, facilities management software industry for over 30 years, since the mid-1990s. Started with Arcabus and uh, eventually worked with IBM and Tririga, iOffice and a few others. And um, I kind of semi-retired last year, but I, uh, when I saw what Nick was up to with uh, IDN and this new interface, I thought, wow, that's really compelling. So anyway, what we got here is a, uh, a two-stage demo. We've got a pre-recorded version that we put together just in the, in the interest of saving everybody's time. And then following that, we'll uh, have a live demo where we can show you a few more features that we've got. And then Nick will take it up from there with some questions and so forth. We are now going to get into the actual demo portion of the event. And I'm going to show you how to get managing your facilities in minutes, not months. Anecdotally, you know, you hear of these projects that take one or two years to get up to speed uh, with these complex IWMS systems. And like Nick said, we are not an SAP. We are a QuickBooks, if you want to use that sort of metaphor. This is, you can, you've got simple facilities and you've got all your drawings in place. You can get up, to, up and running very quickly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on our buildings button. And we are going to come to this Riverfront Center because we've just added a new floor to this building, let's say. And I'm gonna come in here and look at our details. Before we sort of get started here, I'm just gonna pause and show or, and explain to you what I'm about to show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a floor record in a building, and then we're gonna link a drawing file, a DWG file to that floor. And once that's linked in, we're going to just quickly go in and show you how you can categorize space. It's an office. It's a storage room. How to assign surfaces. Does it have carpeting? Does it have ceramic tile? Assigns people. You know, is Bob sitting in this room and Joe sitting in that room? You know, what's the surface? What's the uh, organization? Is that they work for? And you can assign all of those details to individual spaces. And uh, then finally, we're going to print out some reports and submit a service request. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna load a floor plan, categorize space, assign people, and run a service request against that. So let's get started. So here we have our Riverfront Center. I'm gonna create a new floor with this option here. And our floor code, we'll call it the fourth floor because that's what we're bringing in. So we just have two required fields here, the fourth floor ID and name. We're gonna save that, confirms it. And you can see this fourth floor record shows up here in our details. I'm, and we don't see an image of that, of course, because we haven't linked it yet. So I'll just click on this little chevron on the uh, right side. And we're gonna click on our floor plan option. And over here on the left, it's currently showing us one of the uh, current floors. I'm going to navigate to our fourth floor, which is the one that we just created. And you can say, you can see that it says the specified drawing does not exist. That's what we're gonna do next. We've got, again, with the interface here, it's, I think it's very user-friendly. We have these icons instead of words, 
you can mouse over it and tells you what you can do with it. These are our tools and we've got our, you can mouse over again to see what each of these do. We're gonna link our floor plan. So this link button is what I'm gonna click. On the right hand side, it's expecting us to upload a file called 03404, which is the fourth floor of this particular building. I'm gonna click on our navigation and here is our 03404 floor plan. This is a DWG file and I'm gonna bring that in and it reads it. And again, I can use my mouse wheel to zoom right in here and have a look at it. And for those that are, those of you on the call that are familiar with uh, AutoCAD and facilities management tools, each of these rectangles is a polyline or a closed boundary. And the number inside that is the room identifier. You can see in this case, the room identifier is kind of obscured by the equipment symbols in that space. So that's uh, what our floor plan looks like. We've also got that floor plan open up here in a CAD software called DraftSite. So for those of you that are familiar with AutoCAD or other CAD software tools, you'll recognize this. And one important note I wanna make here is that unlike other IWMS systems, you do not need any kind of AutoCAD plugin. You don't need to use AutoCAD. You can use DraftSite, you can use AutoCAD LT, you can use any CAD software you want, as long as it can save a DWG file. And then we can work with that. So that's, you know, you don't have to purchase uh, any other CAD software in order to use our system. So what we're gonna do now, just to get back on track, we're loading this floor plan. We just, we've got some options here on the upper right. We've just selected this plan and we can do a floor link. And I'm just gonna click on this link button. And it's gonna read the polylines that are on the exterior of this plan. And re it reports, us, we got 20,949 square feet. That's really cool. Okay, so that all looks good. What about the spaces? I can click on the spaces template here and I can click on our link button and it's gonna read all the spaces on this plan. And everything looks pretty good except for these two spaces right here that are colored orange or red. And uh, if you look at our legend, it says we've got 205 spaces that are good and we got two duplicates. So that's telling us that we have duplicate room IDs in those spaces and we don't wanna bring that in with that error so we can fix that. And I'm just gonna zip back over to our drawing file here and I'm gonna zoom into that spot and you can see, oh, we have got two spaces here with the same number. That's obviously a problem. I'm gonna click on one of these room numbers here and come over here and change that to what it's supposed to be. 574, and we'll just save our drawing. Say so yes, that drawing's been updated. And now I'm going to reselect that file because it's going to uh, reread it. And we come in here now, we're going to uh, have another look at it. We click on our spaces link and you can see everything looks good now. There's no errors, there's no uh, duplicate text. And we could just commit this right now if we wanted to, but we've got a couple other tools that I wanna show you. Before you load this drawing, we can prepare it. So where is this drawing coming from? I'm gonna click on this prep option here. This brings us into a different viewing editor. And we've got three basic tools here. We've got third party layers. So we've got none, which means this is a brand new drawing. It's got the IDN layers already in place. We don't have to do any layer management. But what if this is coming in from Archibus? What if it's coming in from Centerstone, Tririga, iOffice? We've got tools that will manage all of that. So you don't have to be a CAD expert. You don't have to go into CAD and change all the layers to whatever software you're working with, we can just automatically process that for you. So if let's say you're coming in from uh, iOffice, it will read that drawing, it'll understand the layers that iOffice uses, it'll convert them to the IDN layers if you wish, right? 
So it, it will it will understand where you're coming from. And part of our compatible, affordable, friendly mobile message is compatibility. You know, we're compatible with uh, our competitors, if you will, right? So going along, we have as uh, the next section here is asset text preparation. So if I zoom in here, you can see that the room numbers are quite large. They're in the middle of the space. In this case here, it's being obscured. So uh, we've got this option here to move text and not just move the text, we can resize it. So the text can be proportional to the size of the space. So we've got some tiny little janitor's closet, you know, that the room number will be proportionally sized. And then the other options we have down here, we can create IDN layers, we can hide hatches. I'm just gonna unselect all of these because our drawing is uh, coming in with IDN layers. But we're going to do the move tax. So I'm just going to click on this prepare drawing option. So what it's doing now, it's reading that drawing file, reading all the text, moving that text, resizing it. And the reason we're doing this, it just makes the drawing a lot more manageable, actually. And here we go. We're all prepared. And I'm going to zoom right back into that equipment room. And you can see what's happened here. It's moved that text to the lower left corner. It's no longer obscured. Over here, you can see the all the text has been moved. So that's what the drawing preparation tool does for us. And now we're gonna do the link, okay? So we're gonna click on our floor. We're gonna click on the link option. Everything looks good. And we're gonna commit those changes. So this is the first time that we've actually created any data really in the database because we've, prep we've, uh, we've analyzed the drawing, we've uh, prepared the drawing, and now we're committing it to our database. And next, step is to click on our spaces template we do our link there's all our spaces all the these are coming into the database and we're going to create 200 new 207 new space and we're going to commit those changes now cool and there we are i'm going to refresh this and and now you can see there's our fourth floor with the image. And if you click on link space, you can see all the spaces that are linked. We've got 207 spaces in total on that floor. The entire building has 400 and, or sorry, 43,000 square feet. We can come in and have a look at that floor that we just linked. Okay, so we got our drawing link. What do we do now? I'm zooming in with my mouse wheel, as you can see. We've got a number of tools on the side here. We've got occupancy, we've got surfaces. So let's start with surfaces. We're gonna walk through, virtually walk through our building. We're coming through with a tablet, let's say, and we click on this space. And you can see on the right-hand side here, it says uh, there's no surface currently assigned. I can click on this button and I could say, well, that space has carpet. And of course, that list of flooring furniture, flooring surface records is completely modifiable. I'm going to save that. And you'll see the color changes uh, accordingly. I can also select multiple spaces. So instead of just selecting one at a time, I can hold down the shift key and I can uh, do a multi select like this. And it says you've got eight records selected. So I can take them all and, in this case, categorize them. I can say they are offices, they are cubicles. I can say they have a assignable status. We can put people in those spaces. They all have carpet in this case. And if, if they all work for the same organization, we can come in and uh, select that as well. They may work for the this department and this division sort of thing and hit save. So as you're doing your space survey, as you're walking through the facility, you can update the details like that. You can see I clicked on this categorization button and we have a legend button over here. So it says we've got currently 288 square feet of office space, or in this case cubicles. If we click on our organization, we can say, oh, there's the uh, division department we just assigned to those spaces. Okay. Moving along, what about people? As you're doing your walkthrough, you want to assign people to spaces. 
So we'll go to our chair. You can click on this chair. It talks about occupancy. And you'll see that displays this people button here, list of individuals who need to be assigned to spaces. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to bring up a listing here of all the people that currently are in the system. And if you look at our filter options, what it's currently showing us here is all internal contacts, people that do not currently have seating, and they have an active status. Well, I'm going to say, well, we've got some contractors that just joined us. We're going to, they need place to sit. I'm going to click on contractor. I don't really care what their status is. And we make sure that they currently don't have any seating assignment. I'm going to apply that filter. And it comes up with a much shorter list of people that contractors in this case that we can assign seating to. I'm going to click on Danny Ocean here. When I click on his name, right at the top it says assign Danny Ocean. It's waiting for me to pick a space. I'm going to put Danny right there. And you can see it, his name pops up. And as I zoom in, zoom out, it resizes the text accordingly. So it makes it easy to visualize. And I can just keep going along like that. I can click on Linus, pop him in there. And we can get Frank, put Frank over here. And it's just as that easy, just drag and drop people. Now they are assigned to that space. Come back to our tools, so I click on that space now. You can see it shows Danny Ocean, that's, he's there. I can view edit that particular individual's personnel record. So I can see the organization they work for, their space assignment and so forth. And it's been updated. And I can come here and look at the full edit form for the space itself. So what is the details of this space? Here's the area, the division organization, the type of category type of space. And as you can see, it shows us Danny Ocean is assigned to that. And if there's options here to unassign that person. And of course, you can add new people to the spaces here by using this assign personnel button. OK, so. As we're doing our space walkthrough, we're identifying people, surfaces, organizations, etc. What about if we come across a piece of equipment that we want to identify? So I'm going to click on this equipment button over here on the left. And it's going to change to the equipment mode. And up at the top here, it says click on an equipment symbol, or we can actually add new equipment symbols. So let's say there's a fire extinguisher that we've noticed in this particular space, and we want to make note of that. We could go to list of symbols here. I can click on the plus sign, and then I can come in here and I can drop that fire extinguisher symbol, sorry, on our drawing. But that's kind of big, so I can click on that, and I can change the scale of it, make it say smaller. I can move it, so I can say, well, it's actually over here. Change the color and so forth. There it is. So now, that symbol is placed, I can click on it. And you can see, I can go to the full edit form. So as I'm walking through the facility, I can say, I can identify particular pieces of equipment that I want to manage. I can scan the barcode. If I was using my mobile device here, I could, if the device had a barcode, I could capture that. I can also select the space that it's sitting in. I can say, well, it's in this particular space, and we can save that as well. So that's uh, how we can get uh, equipment quickly into the system. And lastly, we're going to uh, look at our service request option. So let's say as you're walking through this space, you notice that there's a leak or there's some sort of uh, issue that needs to be repaired. I can click on this hard hat guy here. I can click on a space. And at the top, again, it says service requests. Click on a space. And I've got this option up here. It says service request. I can quickly open up a quick service request. I can say, well, what's the problem? <clears throat> it's a custodial issue. The uh, trash all over the place. I want to empty that trash out. And if you want to take a picture of it, I don't have a camera associated here, but if I had a picture that was to select here, I could do that. And then just hit uh, submit. 
I could take a photo of the trash situation and, and attach it to the work order kind of thing. Okay, and then once we've got that mode, I can click on the hard hat and I can see as a, as a work manager where there are work requests in the system. Uh, so if I'm if I was the uh, space planner and as I was walking through and I saw that request, I created that request, I come in here as the work manager now and I can say, oh, there's a work request in this space. What is it? I can click on that space. Maybe I have to do a refresh here. So I click on that space. It shows me the work request that's currently there. I can go in and I can view the details of it. And if I say, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to approve this work request. Every time you change status, it's going to want to know a little bit of detail about what happened there. I can go and print this work order out uh, if I wish. At the bottom here, we have a print option. And I want to send this off to a tradesperson to, to fulfill this work request. Here we got a two-page work order that we can either print out or email to the tradesperson. It could be an outside contractor. And they'll, here's the basic details. And then page two actually shows you where that location is on the floor plan. You can imagine someone who's not familiar with the floor plan. Where is this room? Here it is. Quickly, no problem. And of course, you can display this on your mobile device as well. Okay, well, I don't know how long that took. That was about half an hour. So here we are managing from nothing to service requests, people assignments, all in minutes, not months, and getting back to our website here. If you want to learn more, we have our spaceandwork.net product site. Click on this Learn How button, and here we have a series of videos on how to get up and running. Link your drawings, upload your company data. One thing we didn't show is you can, we have data import tools. You can upload all your company data from your existing systems or Excel spreadsheets and get up and running quickly. Thank you, Ken. That was a terrific overview and demo of the space and work solution. Our technical director, Rich Gritty, has prepared a short demo of our new report wizard that shows the ease of building custom reports with a full English language drag and drop user interface. Take it away, Rich. Imagine someone in your organization asks you for details about the floor coverings in your buildings. While this is certainly the kind of thing you would find as an out-of-the-box report, let's just build it from scratch and see what that's like. So we'll start by going to Reporting, and then to My Reports, where we'll find this New Report button. This takes us to the Report Wizard. Along the left-hand side, you'll see each of the steps we'll be going through to create this report, setting up the columns, sorting, filtering, etc. So let's get started. Click anywhere here in the middle, and that will allow us to choose our base table, which in this case is space. So you'll see that we get started with a bunch of common columns, and some of these we will not need. So let's go ahead and click on a few of these that we don't want in our report, and then we can purge those out. We can also click on a column header and say that we want to insert a new column. In this case, it's going to be the flooring. Now, one of the things you'll see almost immediately is that many of these rows are empty. So not all of our sample data has flooring registered. That's okay, we're gonna filter those out in a minute. There's a couple other things we can do here on the columns section of the wizard. Let's go ahead and click on our category, for example. You'll see that those are all numeric values, but we can replace that with the friendly version from the space category table. And we can repeat that for the type as well as for the building itself. Okay, next would be sorting, but in our case, actually, we don't really need that. So we're gonna skip that for now. Next up will be filtering. And you'll see that now as we move our mouse around the report, we, instead of highlighting the columns, we're now highlighting the rows and the cells. 
So we want to ignore the spaces that do not have flooring. So we can click on one of those empty cells and say we want to exclude that. And so you'll note that across the top, we can start building different filters. So for now, we are hiding where the flooring is empty. So next, let's come down. And because the colleague had asked us about flooring across all the buildings, let's actually start by grouping by the flooring itself. And next, we'll group by the building. And so you can see that now we get a header at the top telling us that we are getting all the details about carpeting, and then we get each of the buildings beneath that. Next, let's head down to our aggregates here, and we can turn on an aggregate for our area. So in this case, we wanna sum up all of the area. And so once again, we can see that with carpeting in the College of Business building, we have got 4,405 square feet. We can also turn on account. And so now we have basically all the details we want. However, there is another little thing we can do here. So if we uh, come over to our tools over here, you'll see that there is a summarize aggregates button. And what that does is takes just the aggregate values. We don't get all of the individual spaces. We just get the roll up numbers. And so here you can see each of the different types of flooring and at the bottom, we get a total square footage across everything. So now we're ready to uh, present this information to our colleague. And so if we move down to the save area, you'll see that there is an export button and we can now export this out to Excel. And so here is all of that same information ready to be presented to our colleague. Let's now imagine we have sent out that Excel spreadsheet and the colleague comes back and says, hey, you know what? We actually only care about the carpeting. Can you just uh, put together a report for the carpeting? And can you give us all of the details so we can see all of the individual spaces that are carpeted? No problem. We can come back to our summary tab here. We can turn off the uh, summarize aggregates feature so we can get back to the full list. Next, we'll come over to our filter area and once again, just like what we did for where we uh, hid all of the spaces that did not have any flooring, we can also click on carpet and say we want to isolate to only carpet. Okay, so now we have a condensed report showing all of the carpeted spaces across our two buildings here. So at this point, maybe we wanna just go ahead and save this off as a reusable report so that our colleagues can actually just come in and pull this report on their own. So what we can do is we can come up to hit save and we can say all carpeted spaces. Hit save and that will tell us that the report has been saved. So if we actually back out to where we started here, you'll see that in my reports, we now have an entry for all carpeted spaces. At this point, this is still only available to us. However, we can click on that and you'll see that we have three options. We can just run the report, we can edit details, or we can actually edit the definition. So details is essentially that same little form we saw earlier. So if you have a report you have created for yourself, you can come here, mark it as yes for share with other users. And when you return to the My Reports area, you'll see it now has a check mark next to it. Now, when any other user comes to shared reports, they will have the option of coming to all carpeted spaces and clicking view in order to view all those details. Very cool. Thank you very much, Rich. I'm gonna hand it over to Ken to do some live questions and a couple of demonstrations uh, of some of the PDF functionality that uh, is in the system for the drawings. Thank you. Um, thanks, Nick. I, um, sorry, I was just muted there for, for a second. So what we, we're, we're back here now, or we're live, we're looking at a live uh, screen and uh, following up on the uh, reporting that Rich just demonstrated, 
I'm going to do something similar, but graphically. So I'm just clicking on our buildings uh, list. You see all of our buildings are here. And I'm going to just jump into this commons building. And I'm going to look at our floor plans. And we can, it just comes in here and it defaults already to uh, a particular category. In this case, you can see the chair is illuminated, so it's showing us people. If I click on uh, surfaces in this case, it's going to show us different colors. And up here on the upper right is a legend that shows us the carpet, the ceramic tile, and so forth on this floor. Uh, if I want to navigate through floors, I can see is there anything on the second floor, third floor? Oh, what about the exterior? Okay. Oh, here we have a site plan. We can come right in here, and you can see our legend changes to asphalt, building area, so forth. Hey, that looks pretty neat. Maybe we've got a snow removal contractor or something. Um, we can go back to our tools. We have a print option. I can click on print, and we can print out to uh, even a DWG. We can default to PDF. Uh, our sheet sizes, we can print all the way up to an architectural E size if you wish. Uh, with And then uh, I'll just accept all those defaults. I'll hit print. It's going to generate a PDF of this image. And I'll just open that up. And here you can see this is exactly what you get on 11 by 17 piece of paper uh, with our legend on, and our totals of all the areas. And uh, this looks pretty nice. So what about the uh, the carpet again? So let's go back to our first floor. And we can see our areas of surface areas. And I'm going to click on the this um, here. We've got these check marks. And I can say, well, I'm only interested in the carpet. So I'm going to uncheck all these other surfaces. And you can see they disappear from the image. And I'm happy with that. And now I can go to my print. And I can send this out to the contractor and say, okay, we need a we need an estimate on uh, cleaning the carpet in this area. So you just have it isolated to carpet, and there's that prints out nicely. So that's uh, kind of following up on what Rich just showed us um, on querying for specific surfaces. Okay, I'm just going to show you a couple other things here. Uh, what if we just want to do a search? We're uh, wandering around the facility. We're looking to find somebody. We have this find person tool. This would be handy on a cell phone. That's why this screen isn't very large. Um, so we're looking for somebody. I, I only know her first name is Chloe. So we'll say we're going to match any, uh, do a search. And it finds that person. And I can click on that and get some details. And right away, it shows me some details about who she works for. And then it nicely, it shows me where that person is actually located. So if you're wandering around, that would be cool to find that. And then what if you're looking for a particular space? Uh, you're looking for a classroom. So we've got, uh, say, you know the room number. So we'll type that in, and it automatically starts searching. I didn't have to click anything. And there she is. That's her space. And we've got some uh, navigation that we're working on. It's the not super sophisticated, but it's sort of a step by step. So if I'm standing here in the parking lot, we're using that sort of as a default uh, X, Y, Z, or, uh, latitude, longitude. But uh, this is where we're headed to over here, the, co the Commons building. And down at the bottom is just a finger. You click on that once you get to the front door, go to the elevator. Next step is exit the elevator down the hallway, and there's the lo location of that individual. I'm going to zip over to our work dashboard for a moment here. And this is where we can manage work tickets. We can create tickets. And I'm not going to go into all of that. We have, uh, we can do separate demos for specific needs. But again, on this, you know, when we're searching, what if we're searching for a particular piece of equip equipment? Uh, and I'm an electrical contractor, and I've come to check the panel. You know, we could do a search, but the one I record I'm looking for is right here. I can do a view edit and say, OK, this looks like the electrical panel that uh, needs to be serviced. And we can say, OK, where is that? Well, let's show that on the floor plan. And it brings up the location of that's the room that this electrical panel is located in. That's pretty neat. But uh, I'd have to wander all around that room looking for it. So what if we come down here and we say, well, let's get a sort of a 3D or an immersive view of where that is. So here you can see there's that electrical panel. 
It's been tagged in here. And this is a software called Matterport. And you see this in uh, real estate uh, applications where you're looking for, uh, you know, looking inside of a, a facility. So what this allows you to do is you may be a facility manager that's new to the job and you haven't had an opportunity to walk the entire campus. You could do a virtual walkthrough and see, well, what kind of carpet is in this space? You know, it's not just carpet, but it's actually carpet tile. You can see that, right? And there's other things that you can do, like we tagged uh, different items in the, in the space. So that's kind of a neat little tool that we have. Lastly, I'm going to uh, just look at this. This is a different uh, sample database. But I wanted to show you these queries. They're like real time-saving queries we have across the top here. So if I'm looking at surfaces, it'll show me the surfaces on every floor all sort of at once. Here they come up here. And it's showing me the, the breakdown in the illustration. I can click on categories. Again, it shows me all the breakdown, all the building support areas, uh, commercial space in this case. And I can come over here and I can say, uh, this linked space just shows you all the spaces that are linked to the database. So this one here, you see, well, what's going on there? That's actually a, a, a void space. It's like a, a double height space. And then what about, say, service tickets? It'll show you all open tickets on any particular floor. So I can come in, I can look at that, go into the floor plan. There it is, it's in that space. I can click on that. And over here, it shows me the uh, service ticket. I can come in here and have a look at that. And here it is, it's currently requested, hasn't been assigned yet. And uh, actually, that clean is the default uh, assignment for any kind of cleaning. And uh, so that's just the work tick. And again, we could print that out. Um, and uh, send it off as a work order. Again, with the location highlighted. So that's uh, just a quick look at uh, some other features. And I guess we'll turn it over to, to uh, Nick for uh, the conclusion. Certainly. That, that was very helpful. And uh, let me uh, come back to our screen here. Oop. Uh, one of the things that uh, is kind of important is to know where IDN fits in the larger scheme of things. And there was a industry analysis done by Trellis Consultancy in June of this year that was uh, comparing all of the functionalities of the various top IWMS CAFM solutions out there. We scored quite well as IDN, but one of the things that is not factored in is pricing. And that's one of the areas that uh, we have, I think, a considerable advantage. The key takeaways that we wanted to make sure that you were aware of today was that you can get managing quickly and affordably that you can use it on any PC, smartphone, or tablet. We didn't really show the details of that, but that's certainly something we do in a private demo. Clear, intuitive navigation on how to use the system. Standard and advanced reporting, which both Ken and Rich demonstrated. And today we have a special demo day pricing offer in conjunction with RSC. So the features and options in the IDN suite what you see in pink uh, is part of the bundle that we are offering today. The other items, pieces of the pie, if you will, are all options that can be activated once your space inventory is up and running. Then you can add these other functionalities as needed. And, and that's certainly something that we can uh, work with you on uh, implementing over a period of time. So in uh, getting started, our starting bundle that we're offering today is a, a three power user system, and most importantly, an unlimited number of viewer requester accounts. So this is all web-based. If people come into the system, they will have the ability to view floor plans and request services, moves, some kind of maintenance, et cetera, and be notified automatically when those things are looked after. Uh, of course, it's all about space accounting, occupancy, flooring, site plans, categorization, status, etc. 
There is work request creation and tracking. There's equipment symbol library, which Ken showed, and the related asset management. And it, it's all inside a secure web-based repository for all drawings and data, including Excel templates for smart importing of contact data, as well as templates for bringing in equipment lists, et cetera, divisions, departments. So uh, most uh, leading IWMS vendor costs on that kind of an offering could easily be $40,000 or more based on a three-year term. Our standard space and work subscription is $15,000 per year, 500,000 square feet included. Portfolio is over the 500,000 square foot level. We'll pay an additional 0.017 cents per foot annually. And we have that adjusted quarterly. And that way we are able to work with you as you grow. For those on the call today, there's this very special $12,000 annual cost that is good for 30 days. And if you wish to pay as you go, it's just $3,000 per quarter via a corporate purchase card. So note that the drawing preparation and project management are separate fees from RSC, which would be discussed in a private situation. As a super bonus, we are offering a development portal and all of our clients have found this to be invaluable, that they have a duplicate sandbox environment for training, customization, and quality assurance testing so that the production environment is left working completely as it should. And if there are things that are being tested or be, people are learning training and adding things and making a mess of things, they can do that in the sandbox without any con concerns about the actual production environment. Leading IWMS vendors uh, do charge a considerable amount uh, as an annual fee for this service. So how do you get started? Easy, easy, easy. Send a drawing to Bob at this address and that will get the discussion started. And of course, at any time, we would suggest you request a one-on-one -on -one demo for your team. So at that point, we'll be happy to take some questions uh, from the audience. Awesome. Joe? Yeah, thank you, Nick. We did have a few questions come in. Uh, this first one is a bit wordy, so let me know if I need to repeat it. But uh, the question is, our university, our university obviously has an established website that our students and faculty use. Can your system be made to look similar so that the experience is a little more seamless to users as they move from our website to your system? Oh yeah, that's a good, good question. Yes, all of the cosmetics on the dashboards uh, and colors can easily be modified. The addition of logos, et cetera, can be done and we're certainly happy to show that in a in a private demo uh, exactly what we mean by that awesome okay all right the next question is uh what space categories are available in your system oh yes uh we have uh for corporate clients we recommend the use of the oscar standards the uh open uh real standards for corporate real estate uh, which is built into the system. For education, we support the FICM standards uh, from the Red Book. And for commercial real estate, uh, people who are managing suites, we support the full BOMA calculation. Uh, and all of those, all three of those are built into the IDN system. So you do not have to re-enter any of those uh, uh, background data items. Okay. The next question we have that came in is, why is your system so inexpensive? <laughs> yeah, uh, we've always been a very lean virtual organization with uh, minimum overhead and uh, without a large marketing spend. So it's uh, a whole different approach in this modern age that uh, we can take advantage of uh, a virtual organization and, and pass along those savings to our clients. Excellent. All right, this next one, who owns IDN? Oh, we, we are employee owned. Uh, we don't have any outside hedge funds or big investors or venture capital uh, telling us what to do. We're really focused on the technology and uh, have been 
in our full existence and uh, you know having the employees run the show has uh, uh, allowed us to innovate uh, to reflect what our clients need awesome yeah this next one's a very very good question i like this are there any file size limits for the drawings uh for your system uh ken if you're on the call maybe you want to address that uh there are no file size limitations like from the if uh, the size of the dwg file uh we've got a number of clients that have very very large floor plans like it might be one level but it's you know 40,000 square feet uh, with all kinds of detail and uh, uh, I didn't get a chance to show it in the demo but we use a, a vector based you know PDF and uh, when that drawing comes in it is still zoomable quickly you can zoom right in closely see the details even down to like hatch patterns and and uh, plumbing fixtures and so forth um, yeah, I know some other applications that I've worked with, they want you to, to uh, reduce the file size, get purge any unwanted blocks and layers, and you've got to go through this exercise to try to get the, we don't have any any problems with that, you know, um, so that's a really nice feature. And, and like I said before, uh, you don't even need to have CAD skills, and if you do need some drawing changes done, then we have people like Robert Stevens who can... Uh, do that service for you if you don't have those CAD skills in house. But yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, this next question may go hand in hand with that, uh, Ken. So, um, does it really only need AutoCAD LT, or do you need AutoCAD to do this? No, um, all you need is a software that can save a DWG file. So I use okay. a tool called Draft Site. Which is very inexpensive, and it does it's does everything you need. Um, but you, there's a million CAD softwares out there. I don't know how many there are, but uh, yeah, it's, we can work with any DWG file. Excellent. Okay. All right, just a couple more. Do you integrate with Workday to provide HR data? Uh, yeah, we we certainly do. That's the common HR human resource uh, system out there. And uh, we provide the expertise to allow the integration of what we call a scheduled feed. So a subset of contact data from HR of who is actually on the payroll can get fed into the IDN system on a regular basis to be able to reflect what is going on with regards to the actual headcount into the system. So that is certainly something that we work with Workday and any other human resource system that can produce a Excel or CSV XML output that gets scheduled to a uh, intermediary FTP site, which IT people are very comfortable with. And from there, it uh, gets inhaled into the IDN uh, system for display. Okay. All right. Last question. Can users connect with our single sign-on system? Yes, once again, sort of like the uh, workday scenario, we work with the IT department on your behalf to engage the single sign on capabilities uh, so that people can automatically log in, especially if we have a large student population that are going to have uh, the ability to submit service tickets. Uh, it's much easier for them to uh, use a single sign on. If not, we can have a, the use of our single uh, self-registration where somebody could put in their name and email address uh, to a particular form and be able to display uh, the uh, forms that are required to submit a re request into the uh, facilities department. Okay. Excellent. I'm not seeing any other questions come in. I know we got a couple more minutes left on the webinar, um, but I'm not, I'm not seeing any more questions. So Nick and Ken, any last words? Well, we certainly appreciate this opportunity to, to showcase what we're doing. Uh, each of the capabilities for different organizations, whether you are in government or in education, higher education or uh, K-12, or if you're a corporation uh, of a smaller mid-size, uh, we certainly are happy to present a tailored demonstration 
uh, of how to take advantage of using their facilities drawings and leveraging them to become intelligent. We are delighted to be working with the uh, RSC team who has an awful lot of expertise in much larger systems and that can be applied of course to a small or mid-sized organization very quickly. The idea is to get up and running quickly at a low cost and hopefully we'll be talking to some of you over the next 30 days to see how we can help you move forward. Thank you so much for the opportunity today. All right, and thank you from, from me as well. And uh, if you need Likewise, to be, uh, the, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go uh, ahead, Ken, I'm, I apologize. No, I was just rambling and uh, <laughs> just wanted to thank everybody for joining. Uh, one, one last thing is that uh, the recording uh, of this session uh, will be made available. There were a couple of little hiccups in there that uh, we'll be able to uh, repair uh, in advance of uh, making that uh, video recording available so that it's easier to share to colleagues uh, without any interruption. Absolutely. Thank you. And yeah, just from RSD, we like to thank our, um, IDN as well. It's been a pleasure working with them and we look forward to, to working with them more um, and in the future. Um, so thank you everybody for coming to this webinar. Um, as Nick said, the recording will be made available um, once you make those, those little repairs. Um, and I hope you all have a great weekend and please go enjoy the nice fall weather. Thanks everybody, bye.